Hey, how's it going? Jason Smith here with uh, Responsible Timber. Um, I wanted to shoot a video today to talk to you a little bit about um, about charging for your services uh, by the board foot, by the day, or by the hour, or just by the job. And so um, I posted a video about this uh, about a year ago. It was actually last summer. And throughout this past year, I've been getting calls, more calls for people that want to charge. They ask me, they say, will you charge by the board foot? And so I, I completely respect why they, why they ask for that. Um, but uh, today I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about that and why we charge the way we charge. And um, just, just kind of get some clarity around, around um, how maybe you should charge for your services. Um, but first of all, I want to let you know again, my name is Jason Smith. I'm the owner here at Responsible Timber, and we make these videos just, uh, just kind of document our, our journey and uh, maybe to help, uh, help other sawyers out and to educate folks about the portable sawmill business and some of the things that we're seeing in the industry and, and some of the trends that we're seeing. And so uh, that's the reason we put these videos together, maybe to help and, uh, to help and educate and and just help get the word out maybe spark some interest or some ideas in in your in your business and uh so but anyway today i want to talk about uh specifically uh, how you charge for your services um, our, our business is right here in middle tennessee uh, area uh, we kind of go all over tennessee um, and like southern kentucky and basically what we do is we go on site uh, we we have a couple of sawmills and we, we go on site, we saw, and then we leave. Like we don't, we're not considered really a lumber yard. Uh, we don't compete with lumber yards. We merely just perform the service of sawing and then we leave. We don't take lumber with us. We don't, we don't sell lumber. We don't resell lumber or anything like that. We just perform the service of actually sawing. So, um, but with that being said, let's kind of dive right into uh, how we charge. So typically I charge by the day or, or hourly rate or, or an even a job, uh, depending, on, depending on what I'm kind of presented with with the, uh, with the customer. Uh, but lately I have been getting a lot of people to ask, they've been asking me, they're like, hey, well, we just charge me by the board foot. And that's okay. I'm happy to charge by the board foot, but there has to be some very specific criteria that's met for me to do that. Um, so typically 90%, no, probably 95% of the time, whenever I come on site to a job, um, the logs need work. Uh, they have to be moved or they have to be uh, limbed or knots have to be cut off. And there just has to be like some pre-work done to the log before I can actually get it on my mill to start sawing it. And so um, moving a thousand pound log around, um, it takes time, right? So I have to carry an extra piece of equipment with me to, to move that, whether it's a tractor or skid steer. Um, and there's, there's wear and tear on that equipment. There's, there's diesel that's burning through that equipment. Uh, and then if you have to limb a log, uh, you have to cut knots off. You have to get that log ready to where it's actually going to go on your mill. And so if you're doing chainsaw work or you're, you're, you know, you're burning through fuel in your chainsaw, you're also, you're also, uh, you have to, you have to sharpen chains on chainsaw. You have to replace chains on chainsaw. So all these things take they take time, right? And so I've pulled into a job before where, you know, you, uh, you have the conversation up front with the customer and you, and you, you know, ask them a series of questions and say, hey, well, what's the situation? You know, do I have plenty of room to work? What's, this, what's the condition of the logs? What's the situation with the logs? What kind of logs are they? Are they hardwood? Are they softwood? And most of the time the customer says, oh, yeah, well, the, the, you know, they're just ready to solve. Um, and even though you had that conversation up front with them and explain to them, Hey, whenever I get there, I just want to start sawing. I don't want to have to handle logs. I don't want to move logs. I don't want to cut on logs, uh, to get them kind of ready for the mill. Um, but like I said, 90, 95% of the time there's work that has to be done before you even think about setting that log on your mill to start cutting. 
And so these things take time. And if you're charging by the board foot and you're not including that in your, in your, uh, in your rate, then you're doing yourself really a disservice and other sawyers like myself because you're not charging a, a, a true and a fair price in my opinion. And if you're just charging by the board foot by your production output and not for you know your time, your expertise and that wear and tear on your other equipment, then like I said, you're doing yourself a disservice um, and you're probably not gonna be in business very long. Um, I, I've seen some people charging 30 cents a board foot and if they have to spend half a day moving logs around, cutting on logs then, and you only, you know, you only put out a couple hundred board feet in a day, then you're never going to make it. Uh, there's just no way. So I would just uh, encourage you to think about that, especially if you're going to a job and you're, you're looking at it, you better know the details of that before you make a commitment to charge by the board foot. I do charge by the board foot. Um, uh, under these conditions, if you bring a log to to my farm and I can saw it here in my shop, I will charge by the board foot. I don't have a problem with do, doing that at all because I'm here at my farm. I can I, I can saw it at my leisure, um, and I don't have to move my equipment anywhere. I don't have to worry about uh, wear and tear on my equipment. I don't have to pack my truck up and all, all my gear and then try to haul it somewhere and then bring it back. It's just much easier for, for, for me to saw it here. If you just want to drop the log and then and then come back and pick it up, or you know, we can make an arrangement to where if you just want to sit here and wait for me to saw it, you're more than welcome to, to watch me saw it as well. But it's it's just uh, it's much easier for me to deal with something like that here at my farm versus whenever I go out into the field and have to carry all my equipment. Uh, burn diesel fuel, getting there, time, and, and everything else. So that's kind of my, my take on it. Um, l let me just kind of give you a, a, a real life for instance. I had a, I had a gentleman a couple weeks ago. Uh, he had called me and said, hey, I've got some pine logs that I need sold. And uh, he said, it's, there's quite a few, and it's probably about two, maybe three days of work. And so I said, okay, that, that's fine. I said, oh, the logs cut the length. And he was like, yes. He said, they've been cut. He said, they're actually trees that were cut down. They were pine logs. So I'm thinking, okay, it was a soft wood. Um, it's, you know, it's a little sappy, but it's pretty easy sawing. It's not like tr trying to saw through hickory or oak. And so I was like, okay, well, f you know, fairly easy sawing. Um, so, and I, I told him, I was like, hey, you know, do I have plenty of room to work around my mill? And, and so we had that conversation. Well, I get to the job site on that Monday morning. And uh, first of all, there was, they were trying to, they were starting to build a house there. So they're starting to try to pour footers there. And, and the logs were, they were trees. He didn't even, he actually didn't even own the job site. Um, he, he had purchased these logs from the people that were building a house and they had dropped the trees there and then they sawed a little bit of the tree. Uh, they were trying to cut them the length but they just didn't have the proper equipment to, to actually make a cut all the way through the tree. And so when I get there, I was like, okay, uh, I explained to him, I said, yeah, I'm gonna have probably half a day of doing nothing but uh, lemon tree, lemon this tree, cutting these uh, logs down to length because uh, he wanted eight foot and 10 foot lumber. And then uh, there was a couple logs uh, that were just, they were so enormous, like I couldn't do anything with them. I just told him, I said, these are too big. I think one of them was like 42 inches in diameter. And I just explained to him, I said, I, there's nothing I can do with this log. It's just, it's too big to go on my mill uh, without me doing some some major chainsaw work on it or, or doing some Alaskan milling and that's a whole different you know that's a whole different process it's a whole different pricing structure for me to Alaskan mill versus uh, bandsaw milling and so uh, anyway I get there I told him I was like I'm probably you know gonna have a half a day if not more than that of just moving logs and and uh, prepping logs 
And he was like, uh, okay. And, but, the, you know, he'd asked me to charge by the board foot. And I was like, well, this is why I don't charge by the board foot. Because when I get there and I have to spend half my day prepping logs, moving logs, and, and getting it ready to go on my mill, like, it just doesn't make sense for me to charge by the board foot. I could charge by the board foot, but I would have to build that into that. And then when I tell you that board foot cost, you're going to probably throw up. And so, um, anyway, about, it was probably about 1 o'clock that day, I finally got to where I could put a log on my mill. I ended up sawing through about 600 board feet that day. And so it was a little over 600, but let's just call it for 600. And, and so if you do the math on that, like if I was only charging like 30 cents a board foot, I would have made 180 bucks that day, which is insane because um, you have, if you start breaking that down, like you have the cost of my machine, the cost of, uh, you know my insurance for my machine the cost of my liability uh, my general liability insurance uh, fuel um, and and all the other expenses that, that go along when you start adding that up like 180 bucks for an entire day of work I promise you you're not gonna make it in this business um, there's no way well, if you're a hobbyist maybe because uh, you know you've probably got other source of income so it really doesn't matter to you but for me, this is what I do every day, and I, I make a I'm, I make a living at it. So, um, it's if you're not charging properly, I promise you, you're gonna go out of business very quickly. And so, um, he he came back out at the end of the day, and he was like, "Well, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a little shocked that you didn't get you didn't get as that much solved." And I and I tried to reiterate it to him. I was like, "Well." That's okay. I said tomorrow's going to be a, a whole different ball game because the logs are sitting right here. They're prepped. They're ready to saw. And so the next day I came, I saw through about 2,300 board feet the next day, and he was blown away. He, he, I actually finished the next day. And he was like, oh, wow, so, you know, I can't believe how much you saw today compared to yesterday. And I was like, well, obviously I was moving logs around yesterday, so I wasn't I wouldn't really saw that much. And so um, anyway, it's just... Um, it's just having those conversations, educating your customer about that. The other thing is, is um, um, explaining these to you, explain this to your customer and, and educating them about uh, what the the service that you're providing, and then also educating them about the lumber industry and how like lumber moves throughout our country. And so it's it's a pretty big process to, and I'm gonna I'm gonna summarize it. It's a pretty big process to start with a, a tree in a forest, and then the tree gets cut down, and then a logger um, is going to limb it. They're going to uh, saw it to length. They're going to load it on. They're going to skid, you know, load it with a skid on a truck, and then it's going to go to a hardwood mill or or some type of sawmill. They're going to saw it down into lumber, and then from there it goes to a kiln. Um, so they may have a kiln on site or it may go to it may get shipped somewhere else to, to, to be dried in a kiln and then from there it's probably going to go to uh, a warehouse and then from that warehouse that distribution center or whatever that warehouse is going to go out to like your home depot or your lowe's or or maybe like a local lumber um, supply store so what you're doing for your customers you're actually you're completely cutting that supply chain out like with the exception of drying your lumber you are cutting all those steps out of the supply chain and in my opinion you should be compensated for that because that's a that's a service that that you've you've provided and your the environmental impact that you you have is has actually helped the environment because that that piece of wood or that lumber is not being shipped throughout the country throughout through that supply chain and so I'm not saying we should get rich off off that, but I'm, I am saying we should be compensated for that fairly um, because we provide that service. The other thing is, is um, these portable sawmills, um, they're these machines. They they're all a little bit different. Like I've got I've got a couple of sawmills, and they all run a little different. So you have to get familiar with that machine, and and each machine is is. It's just different. So learning how to run that machine is not the same as learning how to run another machine. They're all different. They have their own little personalities. And so 
th there's a level of expertise there that has to happen. Whenever you put a log on your mill, you have to look at that log and you have to turn that log on that mill to where you can get the maximum amount of lumber out of it. And so, and, and then also your, your cuts, you need to make sure that you're trying to cut with the wood grain and you're not making like, you know, diagonal cuts through the log or you're not chopping half the log whenever you go through it. And so there's a level of expertise there that, that in my opinion, if you have the expertise, you should be compensated for that um, versus just being compensated by how much production or how much output you're, you're putting out. So those things we should be compensated for, in my opinion, because that's a service that we provide. There's expertise there. There's supply chain things there that we, that we pull out. And so you should be compensated for that and you should be charging properly for that in my opinion. If not, you're doing yourself a disservice, like I said earlier. So those are kind of my thoughts on it. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping this will, this will help some of you guys uh, with your pricing structure. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to, to, uh, to conversate with you. And like I said, we make these videos so we try to educate folks about this industry and we try to help people uh, maybe make a decision to um, how they how they want to price their their business and again just let me know if you have any questions I'm happy to help out and happy to share my experience through this uh, we've been doing this for a couple of years now and it's been a, it's been a, it's been a fun ride uh, and we've been very busy we were very fortunate we stay booked up and so uh, but just let me know thanks so much hope you have a great day